Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about two important organs which play a very important role in the process of digestion. That is liver and pancreas. So before we talk about liver and pancreas, let us quickly recap about glands. We all know what are glands and why I am talking about that is liver is considered to be the biggest or the largest gland of human body. Now before you try to understand the functions of a liver as a whole, you should quickly recap what glands are. Now glands are those organs which synthesize and secrete substances either into blood or apical surface. Now, there are certain organs in the body which are capable of producing some substances and then secreting them. Now, there are two ways in which they can secrete those substances. Either they can secrete it directly into the blood or they can secrete it through tubes into specific places. Now, if they secrete it through tubes, they are called duct glands. If they secrete it directly into blood, they are called ductless glands. Right. So when you say apical surface, it could be the surface of the plasma membrane that faces towards the lumen. That means the towards the body cavity. So glands are those organs. Now, generally glands consist of epithelial cells which are specialized in secretion. You remember we spoke about many different types of epithelial cells, the squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium and so many others. Right. So one function of epithelial cell is that they can secrete. So those kind of epithelial cells which specialize to secrete glands are made up of those type of epithelial cells. Now examples of glands would be sweat glands, oil glands, mammary glands. So if you see all of them have some of the other secretions. You talk about sweat glands, they secrete sweat, the watery substance which you see, which you find on the surface of your skin. That is sweat. Oil glands again, you would see that your hair turns oily quite I mean, sometimes so that is because of the oil glands which are present mammary glands they help in the secretion of milk so these are some of the examples common examples of glands now the question is what do glands secrete now as we say that glands synthesize some substances and then secrete them so what are those substances they can be anything they can be hormones which can act as chemical messengers. They could be enzymes which can help so many chemical reactions taking place inside the body. They could also be some metabolites, the molecules which take part in the metabolic reactions. So they can be any of these. So right now we are going to talk about glands like liver and pancreas and we will see that their secretion so whatever they secrete either in the form of enzymes or metabolites their secretions are going to be extremely useful in the process of digestion so that is why i gave you a brief about what are glands and what do they secrete so let us now talk about liver and pancreas so if you talk about liver it is the largest gland of the body as i said the largest one in the body. There are so many glands present in the body. For example, this, these small glands like sweat glands, oil glands, mammary glands, they are also glands. But liver is the largest one. It is located in the abdominal cavity. So here if you see, this is the liver. So it is, to some extent, you can say that it is located just behind the stomach. So this is the stomach. So stomach is located towards the right side of the abdominal cavity and the liver is located towards the left side. I mean, they are just, they are just uh, like inclined towards opposite side. So if you see stomach is towards this side of the cavity, liver is towards this side. It is generally reddish brown in color. If you talk about how big the liver is, if you weigh it in an adult human being, it weighs somewhere around 1.5 kgs. Now, if you try to touch it, it is like soft. It is made up of soft tissues. It is generally rubbery to touch. However, from outside, you cannot feel the presence of the liver. That is because it is well protected by the rib cage. Now, rib cage is quite hard and tough, so you don't really get to know what is there inside the ribcage. So you cannot feel it externally. 
they are generally made up of soft tissues and those tissues are covered by another layer of connective tissue so this entire liver has a covering of a connective tissue so we will look at the structure of the liver in detail so let us look at the structure so if you talk about the different sections the liver entire structure is broadly divided into four unequal sections the right lobe left lobe quadrant lobe and the quadrant lobe however because of this unequal size of the four lobes sometimes it is also considered that mainly the liver is made up of two lobes that is because the other two lobes these two quadrant and quadrant lobes they are very small when compared to right and left lobe so sometimes you would see that many people say that it is made up of two lobes right lobe and left left lobe so these are the two lobes right and left lobe so if you try to observe it even closely you can actually see this is the right lobe this is the left lobe and you see the sizes are all unequal if you see the quadrant lobe this is the quadrant lobe somewhere here towards the posterior side and the quadrant lobe is not visible from this end it is towards the back side so that is the quadrant lobe so these are the four sections of the liver which are like extremely unequal in size some some of them these are extremely big while the others are too small now the lobes are separated by falciform ligament so if you see the right and the left lobe it is separated by a layer of ligament so this is the falciform ligament here you can see so this or this whichever you call that is the falciform ligament Now, if you compare the size of the right lobe, right lobe, you will see that it is almost five times larger than the left lobe. And the structure of the left lobe is such that it is little tapered towards one end. So you see here, I mean, this is the like opposite from the opposite side, if you see the liver. So this is the left lobe and this is the right lobe. So the left lobe is tapering towards one end. The right lobe is almost five times the size of left lobe. Now, if you talk about the quadrant lobe, so this quadrant lobe, as you can see in this picture, it extends from the posterior side of the right lobe and wraps around the inferior vena cava. So it starts from the posterior. So that's why it, it is starting from somewhere from the back side, which we are not able to see it from the front end. So it starts from back side of this right lobe and it connects to the inferior vena cava. This is inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava is nothing but the blood vessels. You remember while we were talking about the circulatory system, we talked about superior and inferior vena cava. So what I'm trying to say is liver has direct connections with the blood vessels as well. So that is about the quadrant lobe. What about the quadrant lobe? Now the quadrant lobe is inferior to the quadrant lobe and it extends from posterior side of right lobe and wraps around the gallbladder. So this is the gallbladder. So from the back side of right lobe, Quadrant lobe connects to inferior vena cava and the quadrant lobe connects to the gallbladder here. So on the back side you have something connecting the right lobe to the gallbladder from the back side and that is your quadrant lobe. Now, now if looking at this picture itself you can see that the quadrant and the quadrant lobe looks quite smaller when compared to the right and the left lobes. That is why it is often said that the liver is made up of two lobes, right and left lobe which is separated by a falciform ligament. Okay, so that is how the structure looks like. Now, what are the units which make up a liver? So, a liver is made up of hepatic lobules. Now, what is hepatic lobules? So, if you take any small section of the liver, what is it made up of? So, any small division of the liver, uh, I mean, of the liver is nothing but known as a lobule. The term hepatic means anything related to liver. So, you whether you call it a hepatic artery or hepatic... Uh, vein or a hepatic lobule or a hepatic cell so anything related to liver is given the term hepatic so this these lobules the hepatic lobules are the functional and the structural fundamental unit of liver so many such hepatic lobules actually together form this huge structure of liver so let us see how it looks like so this is how each particular section of the liver would look like so these hepatic lobules are nothing but hexagonal units 
So if you try to observe them closely under a microscope, you would see such hexagonal structures. So each such hexagonal structures are known as lobules. So these are hepatic lobules. Now you see each hexagonal structure has these six walls. So what are these walls? These walls are nothing but the connective tissue sheath which I was talking about. Just now I was telling you right that the liver is uh, like overall their liver is covered by a layer of connective tissue. So this is how it is covered because as I said the liver is made up of soft tissues. Now when the tissues are soft, soft it needs to be protected and in order to ensure protection a layer of connective tissue sheath is provided. So this is the connective tissue sheath layer and inside this entire hexagonal structure is called a lobule. So many such hexagonal lobules together form the liver. Now at the center you see a dot like structure. This central dot represents nothing but the central vein. And there are many other veins and venlets as well to connect it with the blood vessels. Now these hepatic lobules, now each of these hepatic, each hexagonal hepatic lobules are made up of many hepatic cells. And these hepatic cells are arranged in the form of cords, in the form of threads. So many such hepatic cells together form hepatic lobules. Right? So hepatic lobules are made up of hepatic cells which are arranged in the form of cords. And these hepatic cells secrete bile juice. So this is what we wanted here. So bile juice is the one which plays an important role in the process of digestion. Now how it plays an important role that we will see a little later. So here my objective was not to teach you the anatomy of liver but to tell you that liver secretes bile juice. Now which part of the liver secretes it? The hepatic cells and hepatic cells are like the basic cells which form the liver. So you got a basic idea about the structure of a liver, how it looks like and from which region bile juice is secreted. Now this bile juice is continuously secreted from the liver. So there are too many questions. There might be too many questions coming to your mind. Now if so, if bile juice is getting continuously secreted by liver, first question is where is it getting stored? Second question is how is the bile juice linked to the uh, alimentary canal because liver is not a part of the alimentary canal. The food or the chyme is right now in the stomach. From stomach it will get into the small intestine. So how will the bile juice which is secreted by liver I mean will interfere with that food? How will that bile juice enter the alimentary canal? So we will now see that how bile juice will interfere with the digestion of chyme. So now the question is what is bile juice? So we got to know that okay there is a, the biggest gland in the body liver which secretes something called bile and this bile helps in the process of digestion. But what exactly is this juice? So let us thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.